Hey guys, happy Veterans Day. Today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, we're coming to you from my house um, and I'm going to let you hear from someone that's very special to me. Um, we're going to be hearing from my husband and he has a few stories that he wants to share with you. But uh, one in particular, there's a veteran in his life that was very special to him and I want him to tell you about him. And so um, here is my husband and my doggy, um, Roscoe. So I would like to introduce to you Chris Bird. Here he comes. There we go. Hey, Brooke. In John 16, verse 13, it says, Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And indeed, in almost any culture since the beginning of time, sacrificing your life in order that others may live has been regarded as the ultimate of courage and selflessness. Understandably, it's an act that only a few people will take. But over the course of the history, some remarkable people have done this, including my granddad. They've given up their lives in the hope that other people will be able to carry on living. What's even more extraordinary and heroic than someone sacrificing their life in order to save their friends and loved one is when someone takes the ultimate step to save strangers. And yet there have been ultimate numerous examples of this happening. Sometimes it's been for reasons of patriotism or for national pride. Sometimes in order to further a cause greater than themselves. And sometimes it's just been in order to save one single other soul. My grandfather fought in World War II. He was a colonel in the Army Air Corps, which ultimately became the Air Force. He was in radar, so he would go to countries that were in the combat zone, and he would set up radar installations to help guide airplanes in. So at one point late in the war, he was in the islands of the Philippines, and he was setting up radar near a small village on one of the islands. Now, he was in the midst of enemy territory, but it was very important that they set up this radar. So the villagers understood what he was trying to do, and he began to befriend the villagers. Well, it didn't take long before that relationship grew, and then something tragic happened. The village contracted malaria. It was spreading throughout everyone like wildfire, including the children. My grandfather knew he had to do something, so he hopped in one of the Army Jeeps, and he drove 10 miles to the Army headquarters. When he got to the Army headquarters, he was able to get medicine and bring it back again, driving very close to the enemy positions to bring it back to this village. It was a very selfless act, and I'm fortunate that I, that I had him for years after that. But I was very proud to know that he did it. And the cool thing about it was he retained the relationship with that village in the Philippines. And for years and years afterwards, they would write back and forth. In fact, they were writing him up to his death. And it was a very special thing that, that he remembered. Now, there are other examples of that, too, that, that aren't related to me. And you might find this interesting. But in 1861, in December of 1861, the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military decoration for valor, was introduced. Since its creation, there have been about 3,500 members of the armed force. Now, you think of the hundreds of thousands of soldiers who fought, and yet 3,500 have been recognized with this highest honor. And they distinguish themselves conspicuously by gallantry and intrepidry at the risk of his or her life above and beyond the call of duty, and they've been awarded this medal. The Medal of Honor is awarded by the President in the name of Congress and is the only military decoration worn around the neck. Its recipients, our most gallant heroes, are the only individuals whom the President and the military of all ranks salute as a matter of custom. That's right, the President himself salutes Medal of Honor recipients. Now, I just went through the list, and it's really fascinating if you ever want to go to the Medal of Honor Museum online and look up some of these guys. And I just was looking through, and I found one guy that really stood out to me. And this guy's name was Staff Sergeant Ronald J. Schurer. He was in the Army 10 years ago over in Afghanistan working at Operation Enduring Freedom. Now, his commando unit was called to climb up a very sheer cliff and attack an enemy position of the Taliban and get up there and see what they could do to help uh, advance the cause of the war. 
So they're climbing up this cliff and they found out that there was an assault set up on top, an ambush that was firing down on their position. So there was enemy machine gun fire, snipers, there was rocket propelled, rocket propelled grenade fire, and the lead portion of the assault element, the lead commander was shot down as well as many of the other soldiers. Now, Staff Sergeant Schur and the rest of the trailing portion were likewise engaged with the machine gun sniper and rocket propelled grenades, but he didn't care. He braved the enemy fire and he moved an injured soldier and treated his wounds. Having stabilized that soldier, he then learned of the casualties among the lead element. So he ran up ahead and he fought his way up the mountainside using intense in, under intense enemy fire to the in, lead element's location. Upon reaching the lead element, he treated and stabilized two more soldiers. Finishing these life-saving efforts, he noticed two additionally severely wounded soldiers under intense enemy fire. The bullet that had wounded one of these soldiers had also hit Staff Sergeant Schuler's helmet. With complete disregard for his own life, he again moved through enemy fire to treat and stabilize another soldier's severely wounded arm. Shortly thereafter, he continued to brave enemy fire to get to another soldier's location to treat his lower leg. After treating him, he started evacuating the wounded, carrying them down the mountain. He then set up a rescue location where he began to treat them, and once he had other people that could come and help them. He used his own body to shield some others coming down and then went back up to engage again. Facing the intense fire, he again met with his commando squad and rejoined the fire. He continued to lead the troops and in place security elements until it was time to remove the evacuation. For this gallantry, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Honor. An amazing story of an amazing man just 10 years ago. Even though these go all the way back to the Civil War, this is one that's just recently. So how did he get this idea to be of sacrifice? Is it something that just happens in the military? I don't think so. There's another gentleman that I wanted to tell you about, and this happened near the beginning of World War II. And this story is about one of the Vanderbilts. I don't know if you've heard about the Vanderbilts, but they're one of the richest families in America. Cornelius Vanderbilt uh, built the Biltmore House and just made a tremendous amount of money. And his son, Alfred, put his money in real estate and in horses. So he decided that he was going to get on a ship and go over to Europe and look at horses. Now, it was World War II, and there were German U-boats prowling the waters. But he decided to go anyway because he figured it's a passenger ship. Nothing's going to happen to him on a passenger ship. So sure enough, they're out in the middle of the ocean and they're attacked by a German U-boat, a submarine. It begins to sink. And Vanderbilt, as a first-class passenger, he was given a life jacket and he gave it away. Then as the ship started to sink, he started concerning himself to make sure as many children as possible got into the lifeboats. Given his status, and given what had happened on the Titanic, he could easily got a spot on a lifeboat and saved his own skin. However, he was still trying to save others when the boat went down under the waves. His body was never found, but the New York Times noticed that he displayed gallantry, which no words of mine can describe. I go back to that verse, greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for a friend or a child. An amazing story. I've got one more for you. Rick Rosoria was a former British military officer. He retired and he worked at the World Trade Center as head of security for Morgan Stanley. Now he had been there in 1993 when there was a terrorist attack on the complex and he thought that surely this could happen again. So he took it on his own to train the employees of Morgan Stanley and have escape drills if anything ever happened uh, again to the World Trade Center. Well, sure enough, uh, when that attack took place on September 11, 2001, because of his efforts, the people of Morgan Stanley were able to get out. He was one of 2,600 people who were killed in the tragic crashing down of the towers. But his heroic actions, leading people down the stairs and following these rules, 
are believed to have saved the lives of more than 2,500 people just by himself. It's an amazing thought that these guys would do this for someone, that they would take the selfless actions that could lead to their own death. And you know, it's interesting. We have a role model like that in the Bible as well. And I think our generosity, our love for others, really needs to reflect what the Savior did for us. I mean, if you think about it, he's God's son. He didn't have to do anything except come down here, be the king, and tell us what to do. But he chose to come as a sacrifice. As the soldier sacrifice, Jesus came and was a sacrifice. His generosity, his willingness to submit himself to danger, to trials and tribulation for us is a great reminder that God loves us, that God sent his son, and he died a sacrificial death for us. That's our role model. That's the role model that these soldiers, that my grandfather used to realize this idea of self-sacrifice, giving away something of themselves in order to save others. How many times have we seen people who only think of themselves, who it's all about me? We see these guys that have joined the military who at some point in their life are called on to make an ultimate sacrifice and they have been willing to do so. There's so much less that we're asked to do and in honor of Veterans Day, with the knowledge of so much sacrifice from hundreds of thousands of soldiers who have done this, who've died, who've fought just for us to keep us in a safe country and fought for other countries to help those countries be safe as well, that this is a time that we could honor them, not just by celebrating Veterans Day, but understanding what it means to make a sacrifice and being willing ourselves to look around and find someone for whom we can be the person who makes the sacrifice. That's my encouragement for you today, Veterans Day.